hello, hello. We are here with Professor Ricard Ferrer, who is a world expert in sepsis. He is head of the Department of Intensive Care at the Valdebron Hospital in Barcelona. Hi, Ricard. Hi, Professor Van Sant. Oh, you can call me Jean-Louis. <laughs> Jean uh, but we are very pleased to have this chat with you because it is sometimes necessary to see where we are in terms of development in sepsis. So what has been really new in, uh, in very recent years, in the last year or so, in the management of, uh, of sepsis? Well, uh, I think uh, in some sense we have to be positive because uh, there is a secular trend in reduction in mortality since the last 20 years. Yeah. And this, re this reduction in mortality, I think, is linked mainly to the improvement in the process of care. Yeah. So taking uh, sepsis as a, as a, as a syndrome, it's got a better structure of the sepsis treatments and the guidelines we achieve this uh, with a very nice year-by-year -year reduction uh, in mortality. Of course, there are improvements, improvements in a better uh, mm, control of the source of the infection uh, linked to better antibiotics, better source control techniques, but also better organ support. So that's- well, Yeah, okay. Important. What about new therapies of sepsis? I'm not speaking about antibiotics, which yeah. in my scheme is the treatment yeah. of infection. That's yeah, important. Yeah. Yeah. But what about you know helping the patient to have a less dysregulated response? Yeah. So this is the most important challenge. So because, uh, as I said, the reduction in mortality is coming from other sources. Yeah. So now we have to focus on uh, in how to try to reduce this part of mortality that cannot be improved anymore by improving patient management, process of care, etc. Okay. And this is quite linked to the different phenotypes. So we group all the infections in sepsis because we thought it's good, but now we have to take sepsis as a different combination of different phenotypes and provide uh, phenotypes that are susceptible to be uh, treated. So, Can you give some examples for yes. therapies based on phenotypes? Yes, uh, we have uh, different phenotypes. For example, we have phenotypes of endothelial dysfunction and uh, we have some- and that would be, with what could we target it in particular? Uh, there is a nice trial uh, phase two trial published one year ago about the use of adrecizumab for yeah. modulating uh, for modulating okay, all right. the function of the endothelium, for example. Another phenotype. Another phenotype would be the uh, endotoxic shock, uh, which is linked to the uh, patients with sepsis and high levels of endotoxin activity. Despite okay. despite the source control is adequate, the patient have persistent endotoxic uh, endo, uh, endotoxin activity in blood. I think this is not a good idea. So this is another potential phenotype. Another potential phenotype is those patients with hyperinflammation with, co with control of the sepsis infection, but very high levels of cytokines. Uh, and that so would be? Yeah, so this uh, can be also modulated uh, by uh, anti-inflammatory drugs, but also extracorporeal uh, techniques. We can have prothrombotic phenotypes. You know uh, that there is a nice trial published with neutral results with antithrombin 3, but uh, I think this is a topic that can be explored more. Uh, and there is okay. uh, this immunoparalyzed paralyzed phenotype, also very interesting. Uh, with immunostimulating strategies. Yes, uh, with immune checkpoint, checkpoint the stimulators can be also used in that, in that setting. So I think that uh, we, we should work on that to uh, reduce yeah. the heterogeneity <laughs> and to try to focus in specific phenotypes for these treatments. Now you, you mentioned purification. Do you have faith in purification techniques? Uh, yes, uh, I, I think that uh, this is something we are using. We are not using that for every patient, of course. Uh, first step is that uh, we are quite convinced that the source control infection is very well controlled, but despite that, the patient is in a refractory situation with high level of vasoactive drugs 
and also uh, biomarkers of inflammation or uh, or endotoxin activity very high. Uh, in that selected group of patients, we are using different uh, blood purification techniques alone or in combination, uh, sequentially, depending uh, on the different uh, uh, profiles. And so you, you mentioned endotoxin, but and and the toxin levels would be increased primarily in gram negative infections people may say well uh, uh and the toxin activity can cap because um translocation from the gut right in, in shock but also of course can come by uh, by uh, after a gram negative infection mainly abdominal but also uh, pyelonephritis cholangitis can be other sources uh, even even pneumonia. Uh, uh, BAD. Exactly right. Uh, and, and so, yeah, people think that uh, endotoxin levels are increased primarily in gram-negative infections, but this may not be the case. Otherwise, we would measure endotoxin levels to adjust our antibiotic therapy, but we cannot do that. Yeah. And indeed, in COVID-19, also endotoxin levels were sometimes found to be elevated, right? Right, right, because uh, gut, gut involvement is not uncommon. Uh, also, uh, translocation from the gut can be present. Um, yeah. Of course, uh, bacteria, gram-negative bacterial superinfection, again, is something that can be present in COVID-19 patients. And so for, for that purpose, you would use uh, hematsorption, you would use uh, polymyxin B-based uh, systems? Yes, we are, we are using that for uh, any type of endotoxic shock, could, could be COVID-19, but of course can be any other type of uh, bacterial sepsis. Uh, so our protocol include uh, uh, all base, baseline therapies. We are convinced that the patient is well treated. The patient uh, persists uh, with uh, high endotoxin activity despite uh, all the baseline techniques has been done. And the patient, of course, is, is in yeah. organ dysfunction. Those are the patients selected for those. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, we, we, we do appreciate your personalized therapies based on, on markers, which is really the right way to go, definitely. But you are also part of the committee of the Surviving Sepsis Campaign, uh, and in your guidelines, you suggested not to use endotoxin removal systems. So were you against it, or what do you think about this recommendation? Well, it it's um, it's it's interesting that these uh, therapies are discussed in the guideline because uh, has only been discussed in the uh, 2021 and 2016 guidelines before has not been discussed the reason for that is that uh, now we have evidence so the first step to be for to be discussed in the guidelines is that you have evidence if you cannot make a pico question uh, you cannot be in the guidelines. So no, but uh, you, you could remain neutral. Here you suggest yeah. against it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So so it may be difficult to do a clinical trial or to enroll patients in a trial with such a recommendation, which I think was inappropriate. But what do you yeah. think? Yeah. Well, uh, so when you so for some therapies, there is not evidence. There is not any pick of questions that can be made. So we have to. Uh, I want to stress the message that for endotoxin removal uh, techniques, there is evidence there. So there is randomized control trials, big observational studies, make it possible to have an assessment of the evidence. The assessment of the ev evidence taken together on these trials is that there is not um, evidence globally that uh, these uh, therapies can improve mortality uh, and uh, that's the com why the committee make a suggestion against yeah. the use, because there is not evidence in favor of Sure, the sure, sure. Now, so, what kind of evidence do we need? Is it really a difference in mortality? Don't you think we are too much focusing on differences in mortality, which are actually very difficult to achieve, aren't they? Yeah, very difficult to achieve because we have to stress that the, the part of mortality we can reduce is... Uh, is uh, it's low because it's only part of the mortality that really can be reduced. Yeah, Other parts yeah. of the mortality are linked to the patient's comorbidity, age, um, how we treat the infection. So it's a little part of the mortality that can be that can be reduced. 
And uh, with this small amount of mortality and the heterogeneity of the population included in this type of trials, it's very difficult that, out that mortality could be an outcome. We have to go for other outcomes related more to morbidity than for uh, mortality. Because we should not penalize those who did large trials which were negative in contrast to those who have not done the trials and uh, who could still, you know, the question could still be open for these ones. So it's very complicated. But you would say that purification techniques have a good future in the field of sepsis? Well, I think it's part of the support we have. So uh, we should consider that for certain patients that have uh, these specific conditions that can be treated using extracorporeal devices. Yes, we have to select the patients. Very good. And any other option that you would like to bring from uh, your um, thinking? Uh, any other sepsis modality that we should uh, study more actively? Well, uh, for example, uh, uh, if, if talking about your sepsis campaign guidelines, there is also a recommendation against the use of immunoglobulin. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and again, I think this is a therapy that can be indicated in some patients, for example, those patients that have sepsis yeah. and levels of uh, IgM below 0 0.8. And we have some uh, information that uh, can be, uh, can be uh, helpful for this group of patients. So again, Absolutely. Uh, I agree. Again, yeah. There, again, there is much to be done, and uh, but perhaps done. we should not always focus yeah. only on mortality, right? Yeah. yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay Ricard, our time is over. It was very nice talking to you. Very take nice. care, my good friend. Hasta luego. Yeah, bye, bye bye. Bye bye.